restores my soul. He, lay, he causes me to lie down in pastures to, to find rest, even in the midst of the valley of the shadow of the death. Of death. And when we don't give up, but turn the will, when we don't give up, but turn the will over to him and rest, we will see that the story he has written for us will end in victory. Don't give up. Don't waste your detour. Don't give in. So the people here are, are complaining. They're worried. They're probably passing out in fear. I would be. Verse 13, though, God had been working in Moses. He'd been building up courage and faith. And notice what Moses says. But Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. God had informed Moses about his people's destination five times in the early part of Exodus. When, when God and Moses were having that back and forth at the burning bush. When God and Moses, whenever Moses would complain to God because of his lack of faith and anxiety and fear after talking to Pharaoh, God reminded Moses five different times, possibly more, but I counted at least five times where God put in front of Moses, Moses, don't forget, I have a promise for you. I have a plan for you. It's a place that flows with milk and honey, and I'm going to lead my people out of Israel, out of Egypt, and I'm going to lead them to that land. Don't forget that, Moses. And after each time God put that in front of Moses, it was always after a crisis of faith of Moses. It was always after that crisis of faith. And so it's as if God is turning Moses' head and saying, look, you're focusing on all of these negative things all around you. Look ahead to the point, to the place, to the land, to the promise that I have for you. And so that's what we have to do. We have to look ahead. God didn't tell Moses about the detours. That wasn't important. God's not going to tell you all about the detours. It'll scare you to death. But he does tell us about what is ahead for us. And that's how, also how we deal with detours. Moses led with the future in mind. We live with the future in mind. That's how we deal with detours. We live with the future in mind. God spoke to Moses countless times. And in those times, he reminds Moses about the future he has for Moses and his people. And we today have the written word of God. We have to get in the word when we're discouraged or distracted. We have to get in the word to be reminded of what the future holds for God's people. Moses was fully aware of Pharaoh's proximity. But he was more aware of God's presence and promise that God had promised a special land, a land flowing with, with milk and honey. And them drowning at the bottom of the Red Sea was not their destination. He was fully aware of the barrier that the Red Sea presented to them. But he was more aware of God's presence and power that God holds in his hands the depths of the earth. In the highest mountains, the seas belong to him, for he made it. His hands formed the dry ground too. If the same God who made the seas and the dry ground, if he's the same God that, that they worship and that they were to follow, he's the same God that can part the waters and cause the people of Israel to walk on dry ground. He trusted in the one who formed, who says, who is saying, do not be afraid for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as a ransom for your freedom. Therefore, Psalm 95, 6 says, come, let us worship. Let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is God. God's plan for your life isn't to just save you. But he has a destination for you. And we need to align our minds and our hearts with his. So how do we do that? Worship. Worship. It's critical when dealing with detours because it aligns our thinking. It aligns our hearts. It aligns what we love about God. It reminds us the truths about God. It recalls who he is.
God. It reminds us the truths about God. It recalls who he is. That the living Lord does not abandon, but he fights for his people. He delivers his people. He restores his people. And as a result of giving victory to his people over Pharaoh and his army, he gave Moses a song of worship. A jubilation to sing. Exodus 15, notice this, the people cross on dry ground and then Moses is just filled with, with awe as he writes this beautiful, beautiful song of praise. Exodus 15, then Moses and the people of Israel sang the song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. He has hurled both horses and rider into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. This is my God and I will praise him, my father's God, and I will exalt him. Verse 11, who is like you among the gods, O Lord, glorious in holiness, awesome in splendor, performing great wonders. You raised your right hand and the earth swallowed our enemies. With our unfailing love, you lead the people you have redeemed in your might. Notice this, talking about living with the future in mind. You guide them to your sacred home. He's giving us a song to sing. He's given me many verses to add to my song of deliverance to worship him with. When you find yourself in a similar predicament like that of the people of Israel, you can either sing a dirge or you can raise a hallelujah. You can raise a hallelujah up to the living Lord God who neither sleeps nor retreats, but stands and fights for his people until they have safely all made the crossing. So may we this morning, whatever we're going through, whatever detours we're having to deal with, may we raise a hallelujah by declaring with Moses, don't be afraid, O oh my soul. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. God is inseparable. Let's pray.